Hi, this is Heidi Hobson. I'm a technology support teacher with the Waterloo Regional District School Board, and this is a short tutorial on creating a Google Form with the new Google interface. So to begin, you'll go to New, More, and Google Forms. It will open the existing interface, and what we need to do is click on Try the new Google Forms. This will open the new interface. If at any time you want to go back to the old interface, in the bottom right corner here is a little running man, and it says back to the old Google Forms. You just simply click on him, and you'll go back to the existing interface. You may sometimes get a questionnaire from Google, to, and they will ask you why you're going back, um, and that's a great way to give them some feedback. So in the new interface, most things are still here. The biggest difference right now is no scripting is allowed. So at the top is where you would title your form, and we are going to build a learning skills form today. And when we enter that in, you'll notice that the title also um, shows up at the beginning of our form. Two main sections to our form, the questions, and this is where we will enter all of the questions that we want to create, and responses, and this is how you will actually um, find your responses once you receive some. You can get them also directly from your drive, but this is also an easy way to get them directly from the form. So we'll go back to questions. At the top are some settings. Let's review these. The beginning one is the color palette, and that will help you change your theme if at any time you want to change the colors. And so we're just going to go back to purple for now. Preview will show you what your form will look like. Settings. Let's click into settings because there are a number here we should address. I'm in a GAF environment, so it defaults to requiring a GAF login in order to access my form. If I require the login, I can collect the username and I can uh, restrict that only one response per person can be made. For the purpose of this form, I'm taking these off and I'm also going to remove this and make it anyone. Confirmation page, this is completely customizable because it's me who's going to be filling this out and if you're making one for yourself, yourself, you might just give yourself a nice little promo. You rock. A nice put up. But again, you could make it anything that is pertinent. Show respondents a link to submit another response. Yes, because we want to be able to refresh our form immediately. To edit the response, this will allow me to go back to the uh, response I just submitted and be able to edit it. See a summary of responses. This is up to you. This really just shows your responses in a graphical format. For my purposes today, I'm not going to choose that. And the last two are your presentation options. If you have a significantly long form, you may want to show the progress bar. And that'll show them that, you know what, 10 of 15 questions have been answered. Um, and if you're doing a quiz-like form, you may want to do shuffle question order. Again, for the purposes today, this is going to be off. Then you just click Save. Okay. Skip over Send and go to the far right uh, three buttons where it says More. These functions used to be under the File menu, okay, where you can make a copy of this form or get rid of it or print it. The Adding Collaborators, this is how you share your form with people who you want to edit. So if they are going to be creating questions with you, then you would click on Add Collaborators and this is where you would then type in the people's name. and I could share it with my friend Elke and she could be an editor for me. I'm going to click cancel though because I don't want to share this form at this time and be done. Um, and then this is also where you can get some help or take a tour of the new environment, which we're not going to do today. So like the existing interface, you have your title at the top, you can give your form a description, and then you have your questions. Th some things have moved around, so if I click into this question, you'll notice that the type of question is here to the right, and if I click on the drop-down menu, I have some other options that I can make the question. I'm going to click out of that. At the bottom, I have an ability to duplicate a question, delete it, make it required, and this more menu allows me to give hint text, so if my question requires hints, um, or if I have an if-then uh, kind of question. So if they answer yes, I want them to get a different follow-up question than if they answer no, I will need to give them the go to a section based on an answer option. To the right, there are five more icons and the plus sign will allow you to add a question, titles and descriptions, images, videos, and this one is adding sections. So again, if you have multiple pages or if you want to do the branch tree. So, coming back to the question, untitled question, this is the name of the actual question or the question you're going to be asking. We are building a learning skill observations form, so this first question is going to be student name. 
Instead of a multiple choice, because I could have up to 20 options and multiple choice just lists them down as one column, I'm going to make this a drop down. And then you'll see that it gives me some opportunities to put in the names. I don't want to type in 20 names. I actually have them in a class list. So I'm going to come over here and copy them. And then go back to my form and paste them and they'll all come in. Now unfortunately it does not automatically create uh, the list in, uh, in alphabetical order. I could choose a name however and move it up. Let's see if it'll keep moving it up for me. And where did that one go? There he is. Sim. So I can move him to the very top. Okay again I can move the next one up and so forth. So that's how I could do it. Okay. I do want to make this question required. Required means that this question cannot be submitted with a blank answer. Um, it must have one of the students names in it in order for the form to be submitted. Now I want to add a second question. This next question is going to be the actual learning skills. I don't want a multiple choice for this one. I'm going to scroll down and you'll notice that there's one called a multiple choice grid. So this becomes like a table. And what it allows me to do is have rows and columns of information. So in my rows, these will be the actual learning skills. I'm not going to make this one required because it says require one response per row. That would require me that every time I use this form for every student I have to comment on all six of these. There may be times I only want to comment on one of them as I'm recording observations through the day or through the week and so I'm going to leave this one um, as unrequired. Add one more question and this one's going to be comments. And because it's comments and it's anecdotal I want a paragraph response. And I'm, I am going to make this one required because if I am using this form, um, I want to know what it was, you know, if I gave somebody responsibility and I gave them an S, why was it that I gave them that S? Okay, so our form questions are complete. I'm going to now go up to the top and I want to go to color palette. Now, simply I could just change colors or I can access the previous themes as we're in the existing um, template. I happen to like this one. It's kind of calming. <laughs> so if I want to preview my form, I click preview. It's going to open a new tab and this is how my form will look. So this is how the grid looks when you are filling it out. If I were now to complete it, I can say for George and let's just say George. Uh, and let's not do the last two just so I can show you that you do not have to do them all. And for comments, I'm going to say that uh, and then we just click submit. And we have our message, you rock. That's great to hear. <laughs> I can either edit my response and it'll take me back to that existing response or I could submit another response. And when I click submit, it takes me to refresh the form. Okay. I'm going to go back to the form itself and now look at responses. So you can see that we were able to see the responses graphically, which may or may not be of um, a need. But when we go up here where it says um, responses, we can click on our response sheet and click create and then see it in the response um, sheet, our answers and our comment. You can also go back to your drive and you can find both of those documents in your drive. And you will see that you have both a form and a response sheet that you can also click into. If you click into the form, you'll get the editing version. And if you click into the response sheet, it will open up the response sheet. So you have your form built. We know where our response sheet is. Now we, if we wanted to share the form, with others. So if we were, let's say for this form specific, specifically, excuse me, if there were other teachers that we wanted to share it with, um, we don't want to use collaborators because that's for them being able to actually change the questions themselves. We just want to share the finished form. So to share the finished form you can click on send and you can do it a few ways. We could email it to them and it will actually embed it in the body of the email. We can give them the link and you can also give it to them as a shortener or you can embed it on a website. So those are three different ways that you are able to share it with people. 
and that's how you create a Google form with the new interface and how you share it. Thanks for watching.